So it's the summer holidays. You're enjoying yourself, you're having fun, but med school is around the corner. And each day that goes by, you feel it. You are moving one day closer to starting the real thing. You might have a million questions running through your mind. How should I prepare? How do I find balance? How am I gonna have a social life? If you have any of those questions, this video is for you. Hi guys, if you're new here, I'm Anthony and I'm about to be a final year medical student. Last year I achieved top 1% in my exams and I've been able to do this whilst maintaining a pretty good work-life balance, making some great friends along the way. So I've been there, I've walked the walk, and I wanna share with you the seven most important things I wish I had known before starting medical school. Things that you might not have considered and you might not have thought about. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so firstly, something to do with studying is to learn how to learn. And it sounds so stupid, it sounds so obvious. You're gonna be spending quite a lot of time studying as a medical student. There's no two ways about it. It makes sense to learn how to do it properly. You may have been able to rely on things back in high school, back in A-levels, because you're naturally quite intelligent, you're naturally able to pick things up quickly, but they might not have been the most productive, the most effective ways to study. And so now that you go to medical school, it's a completely different game. It's important not to just stick to your comfort zone. The two things you wanna know about is active recall and spaced repetition. I'll give you a basic overview of what they are. So active recall is essentially when you're making your brain work hard. Spaced repetition is when you study things over time, but each time you study something, you leave it a longer period of time before you study it again. I don't wanna talk about this in too much detail because there's so many other great videos talking about this. I'll link some of the videos that I made down in the description. All right, so the second thing is more of a general thing about university, which is being able to manage the myth of FOMO. So if you don't know, FOMO means fear of missing out. You need to understand and break it down. Why, what, what is it that you are scared of missing out on? Fun, right? It's fun. But you have your own fun, right? You need to understand what your priorities are. I'm not saying don't go out, as I went out, I had fun. It is a hard skill to be able to say no. When all of your friends are going out, they say to you, oh, don't be boring. It's hard, peer pressure is real. But if you wanna actually accomplish things that you set out for yourself and set out goals that you wanna do yourself, then you have to say no. You can't say yes to everything. Because the harsh truth at university is that there's always going to be things that are fun. Best way to say no is just to be honest and truthful about it. You don't need to offer an explanation. For example, if someone wants to try and get you to go out, do something, all you need to do is say no thanks. They might seem annoyed in the moment, but really deep down, they respect you for having goals, right? They respect you for being able to say no. The third thing that I wish I knew was to treat studying like a multiplayer game. To think of it as if you're in a team. You're here in this big, big family of medics who all want to just try and be the best doctors they can be. Because med school is a long, long journey and sometimes it can get lonely. For example, you're away on placement or you're studying whilst some of your other uni course mates are going out. You can start to doubt yourself. You're about 50 lectures behind and you start thinking, oh, did I sign up for the right course? That's when your friends and everyone around you comes in. You need to have that network, share your resources, help each other out, study together. When it comes to exams, test each other and it'll be a lot more fun, enjoyable process along the way. It'll be sustainable. You can actually study effectively over a long period of time, over months, years, because you know that they've got your back and you've got theirs. All right, the fourth thing is that nights always lead into mornings. When I first started med school, I, I just underestimated how important just getting a decent amount of sleep was, thinking that I was indestructible. But then I realized, okay, what do I actually enjoy in uni? What do I actually enjoy? And for me, what I really enjoy is hanging out with my friends, doing stuff in the day, as opposed to going out at night, drinking heavily, not really remembering what happened, kind of pretending like you had a good time, meeting people that you never will see or speak to in person again. A lot of people will, will understand that feeling where you wake up late, and then you just write the whole day off because, oh, my day's gone off bad, so I'm just gonna not bother. I'm not gonna do anything productive. It might make you consider when to go out. I'm not saying not to go out again, but I'm saying really make sure 
you're conscious of your decision. It's good to go out when you've planned it in advance, but you don't want to be roped into peer pressure all the time. The fifth thing is to avoid narrow-minded limiting beliefs that people will bring you down with. They'll drum these beliefs into your head. They'll say you have to study all day, otherwise you're going to fall behind. Or you don't have time to be pursuing your passion, your side hustles, your hobbies, because medicine is too intense for that. You need to understand the power of your own thoughts. If you don't believe you can do it, best believe you won't do it. If you don't believe you can achieve something, you're not going to achieve it. What I'm most grateful for from this whole experience is not doing well in my exams. It's not It's not coming top 1% last year. That's not what I'm most grateful for. I'm most grateful for the people I've met, what I've learned about myself, how I've developed as a person. I feel like, I feel like I've made this journey from being an 18 year old boy and I'm slowly becoming a man. With a job and back in school, you have a set nine to five every single day. There might not be a time in your life again where you get this much free time to yourself to explore new things, to start things on the side, to, to start going to the gym, to start doing a new sport. So don't listen to the people who, who will try and narrow you down into this bracket of people and limit your imagination, limit your ambition. Really, really know what you want, set goals, move the needle towards those goals. I want to shout out the sponsor for this video, Short Form. One book that has genuinely changed my life that I've read is a very short book. It's called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And it's all about the power of your own thoughts, how your life, what happens to you, is shaped by how you think. Short Form produces extremely high quality, condensed book guides for people like me who are very busy, don't have that much time. And you can get a free trial and 20% off a annual subscription using the link in the description, so check it out. The sixth thing that I think is important to mention is the power of discipline. It's no good just to purely rely on motivation. I've talked about this before, but motivation is purely these bursts of energy that you get. It's not sustainable to really building something in the long term. Why discipline? What is it? It's ignoring something you want now for something better later on. It's the strongest form of self-love. It reveals the commitment that you have to your dreams and your goals because the future you is depending on the current you to make the promises that you made yesterday. And if you can delay gratification knowing that you have a bigger goal and reward later on, that is the biggest superpower you can have at medical school. When you're studying, you need to know that this is for a long-term goal, it's for your exams. When you're saying no to going out, this is because you're committed to your sport and you don't want to be hung over the next day for training. If you can't even trust yourself, how can you trust others to trust you? How you do one thing is how you do everything. So in medical school, you know, if you're disciplined with your studying, if you do little and often every day, you're much more likely to then do little and often in the gym, little and often with your relationships. Finally, the seventh thing that I wish I'd known is to play the right games. This one might seem a bit confusing and you might think, what do I mean by playing the right games? As a med student, as you already know, that you do have less time than other people in other degrees and courses. So with that in mind, you wanna be very conscious about the things that you wanna focus on and get better at. And you don't wanna spread yourself too thin. You can have anything you want, but you can't have everything you want. You're not just trying to temporarily satisfy yourself. You, you wanna to work towards being amazing and be great at a few things. There's a quote by Naval Ravikant where he says, a calm mind, a fit body, these things can't be bought, they must be earned. Pick the things that you really wanna be good at. For example, be an amazing medic, be great with patients, your health, go to the gym, do your sport, relationships. You wanna make sure you always put time in with the people that you love. At the beginning, feel free, obviously, to explore if you didn't really have any hobbies or passions before uni, then take that time to join societies, explore. But once you've found what you really love, then stick to them. What I've learned is that there are things that you should really care about, like your relationships, your health, and your studies. These are three things that, that you should prioritize above all else. All right, that's it for today's video, guys. Again, I'm probably ranting a lot in this video. I like to do that a lot, but if you didn't enjoy this video, then I'm sure you'll find it useful my video on how I rank top 1% at medical school which I'll link up here or you'd watch my video on how to stay insanely productive at medical school which I'll put here but anyway thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video stay tuned